why most people quit in their journey of learning the Arabic language, despite being a journey that doesn't require more than a year, year and a half, two years. So my name is Mohamed Andersi. I am the founder of AndersInstitute.com. And based on the data that I have of, at the moment, 650 active students, I have seen that most people drop out of their Arabic learning journey because of one reason. And in this um, video, I want to tell you guys about, about this reason and uh, explain to you guys, hopefully it benefits you if you are learning the Arabic language at the moment. So um, let's get into it. Why everybody or everyone stops the Arabic their Arabic journey or the Arabic journey and how to finish fast. Now, what you will learn in this video is, uh, first of all, the shocking statistics. Uh, we will talk about, you know, how more than 90% of Arabic learners quit before fluency. And, uh, and this is something that, you know, is an average, more than 90%. But, um, but, but this is pretty much like it's always, it's always the small percentages, right? The top 1%, top 10% that complete something. Uh, we'll talk about the importance of of the Arab, of the of the Arabic language as well as a liturgical language of Islam. Common challenges the main problem learners face why they stop, and the secret technique that I will share with you guys, and how focusing on one thing at a time leads to ra rapid progress. Now, in terms of the statistics, as we were saying, ninety percent of Arabic learners quit before fluency, and this is a common challenge among among language learners in this case, the Arabic language, which is consistency. It's just, just sticking to it. And, um, and this relates to other pursuits as well and other goals like resolutions. People, they tend to write yearly resolutions in the beginning of the year, of the, of the year then never complete it. Uh, you know, fitness resolutions. I'm going to start going to the gym. These, that, they go for a week and then they drop out. It's pretty much how human beings just behave but if Allah has given you the the fadl and the rizq of being self-aware and you know how to get yourself back up once you fall because we all fall but the difference is that there are people who knows how to get up over and over again and they are self-aware they know why they they fell etc etc and there's people they don't even know why they are experiencing what they are experiencing and they tend to not take responsibility and put it into uh, other, um, other, other things or other individuals. Say, oh, the teacher, oh, the book, oh, um, my family, oh, my... And they never take responsibility, which is, uh, you know, um, unfortunate. So in this video, hopefully you are going to learn how to be from those who are self-aware, who understand why you start to drop out, why you start to feel like you want to give up and how to stick to it, inshallah. So in terms of the importance of, of the Arabic language, of learning the Arabic language, I have collected a few aqwal, a few sayings of a few scholars here. Now, this one says that, that there is no doubt, there is no doubt that the infiltration of the English language into the lives of the nation, meaning the Muslim nation, the Ummah, has led to a decreased understanding of religion and its rulings, relying on a limited group who attend the Islamic universities, whose curricula have also been corrupted by the introduction of many subjects that compete with religious sciences. Meaning that the, the, the people who are learning now Islam, how, the, how our scholars used to learn it, they are very few. And now most people, they have this, this understanding that oh, I have to go to university and the university curriculum itself, it's been as well infiltrated or corrupted by these, um, you know, what's the word? This uh, opening of the world and just, you know, adapting to the modern ways, etc., etc. So the curriculums, uh, they tend to be as well infiltrated by this and corrupted. And so these students who think that, who think that now they have graduated from university and they have, uh, you know, achieved understanding of, of the deen, they as well, they, they go ahead and this has weakened the scientific ability of graduates in religious sciences, leading to a decreased understanding of Islamic law and its objectives. And so um, 
And so they give, you know, fatawiya, they give uh, opinions that that don't really make sense or are not really, you know, too good for for their community, etc., etc. So this is one of the importance of learning the Arabic language. Another another saying by a Algerian scholar, he says, if our natural Arabic dispositions and instincts for understanding the Arabic language have deteriorated, deteriorated, deterior, deteriorated, and made it difficult or impossible to understand the words of our Lord, then learning Arabic and its sciences can give us acquired instincts. Now, what this means is that I'm going to continue reading. He's going to explain it a little bit. The early Arabs had Arabic as a natural instinct, saliqa, and the leading scholars of tafsir who explain the meanings of the Quran provide provide value valuable insights by studying their works. Who we can compensate for not having uh, inherited the Arabic language naturally from our parents, but having learned it in, in, instead. So what it says basically is that we kind of have a weakness if you are born in, uh, you know, in a Western society or any even now right now. If even if you are born in an Arab family, and your parents don't speak to you in Fusha, which I you know I'll be surprised if anybody does that, then you you have a weakness in your understanding. But the scholar says that if you then go ahead and learn the Arabic language, you can acquire that even though it wasn't given to you by your parents. And to be honest, even it, you could acquire it in a, even in a better way if you if you study it. Now, this is a ta'liq, a comment on a, on, on a tafsir of an ayah, inna nahnu nazalna dhikrah wa inna lahu la hafidhun. And so he says that the dhikr mentioned in this ayah, that we have descended the dhikr and we will preserve it. He says the dhikr includes the Quran, the sunnah, jurisprudence, yani fiqh, and the Arabic language, because all of these are part of the Quran. The Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. The Sunnah explains it and clarifies it, yani the Quran. Jurisprudence, yani fiqh, it's, it's, is its essence. And the language is the tool for understanding, studying, and teaching. Allah has preserved, has preserved all of these, and it will remain upheld in, it will remain upheld in the religion of Allah and his book and the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad protected from distortion until the day of judgment. So, so this scholar explains here um, that the Quran and the, the, the dhikr that Allah says that he has preserved includes the Arabic language in it. Because through the Arabic language, you understand the book itself. Now, another qawl says that by by one of the early scholars of uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia says learning the language is advised especially for those who are not Arabs by religion and language and even for an Arab whose religion is not the religion of the Arabs as they miss out on what others understand similar to the ignorance or those of those who do not know the text and thus fell into error so and here what I what is what he's emphasized is as they miss out on what others understand. Meaning that, and he said this in Arabic, uh, So if you know Arabic, you will understand things that you will not understand if you don't know Arabic, even if you read over and over and over translation translated books in Arabic. And and that's just how it is because there are certain things cannot be transferred through translation. You you acquire, you understand certain things through reading it in the original language. Now so this was another call. Now moving into the next topic that we want to talk about, which is the common challenge, the main problem learners face and why they stop. Now, the main problem that I have seen students of the Arabic language have is that they are distracted with a lot of goals at the same time. So you will see a student, he is re he's learning Arabic, yes, but he is as well memorizing Quran. He is as well going to fit classes. He is as well trying to uh, get a degree and trying to achieve his fitness goals and trying a specific course. 
and, and trying to get his driving license and trying to start a business. He's doing a thousand things all at the same time. So here I have listed eight different things or different goals that the person is trying to achieve for the sake of example, right? So now in order for me to um, convey the message that I'm trying to convey, I need you to imagine that in a month you have, uh, sorry, this is actually not correct. In a month you have, you only have eight units of mental energy. Now, I want you to imagine that. So, so I want you to imagine that in, in a month, in a month, you only have eight units of mental energy. And, and these eight units of mental energy that you have to spread across your main, your, your different things that you want to accomplish. Okay. And, uh, and you need a hundred units given to each goal to complete across however long it takes you. Now, so if, if every month, if, if you're trying to accomplish eight different goals and you have eight units per month to give to each goal, that means that you will be given one unit of energy, of mental energy to each goal per month, right? So you would need 10, 100 units spent on each goal in order for you to complete that goal, right? So, so now imagine that on month number one, you have given to each of those goals because you have eight units of energy and you have eight goals that you want to accomplish. You have given to all of those goals one unit. So on the first month, you are still on square one. Second month, you have given now two units of energy. Third month, you have now given three units of energy. Seventh month, you have now given seven units of energy. Now, as we said, you need 100 units given to each goal in order for you to complete the goal. So you still have 93 units to give, right? So you still have basically 93 months that you will have to, to continue to do this. Now, and that's if you was 100% disciplined through the seven months. Now, because most of the times what really happens is that you start doing different things all at the same time. And then you get overwhelmed. You stop one. You start doing the other one. Then you feel guilty that you stopped it. So you go back to it. So... So it, it, it looks more like this, right? The Quran is going to be high, then the fit you had to stop it, then the degree you was obliged to go to school anyways, then the fitness. So it's, it never goes like, when you say I'm, I will do all of these goals, it, it never goes all together. Okay, you know, we progress in most of the times, except illa mar rahim Allah. So the reason why this happens is cognitive overload. overload. And cognitive kind of overload occurs when the brain is overwhelmed by the amount of information or tasks it is trying to process simultaneously. simultaneously. This can lead to decreased efficiency, increased errors, and ultimately a higher likelihood of abandoning tasks due to mental fatigue and frustration. Cognitive overload can impact decision making, problem solving, and memory, making it difficult to maintain focus and complete tasks efficiently. Or effectively, this phenomenon is well documented in the field of cognitive psychology and neuroscience. So basically, in simple en English, is that if you have cognitive overload, meaning you just your brain is focusing on too many things at the same time, you try to think on how to do well the memorization of Quran and how to think about this masail of fiqh and how your degree you need you have exams in a week and how. Uh, you need to start this specific course that you're doing. You have a whole lot of information going into your mind and your, and your brain can only uphold a certain amount. It, it, it has gigabytes. So it can only uphold a certain amount of computer power or memory storage, right? So you will have co cognitive overload, then symptoms will start coming. And these symptoms are decreased efficiency, increased errors, mental fatigue, and frustration and all of these things, the outcome of it is a higher likelihood of giving up on certain tasks. 
So on month number one, however, if you were only focusing on one specific goal and you still have that same amount of energy, of mental, uh, mental energy per month, which is eight units, what will happen is on the first month, you, will, you would already had accomplished or given eight units to that particular goal. On the second month, you will have given 16. On the third month, you will have given it 24. On the fourth month, you will have given it 32. On the seventh month, now you are past half the way of accomplishing it. However, if you compare it to doing two things at the same time or doing too many things with Arabic at the same time, what happens is that if you were to only focus on Arabic, you can literally complete it and then take on another of these eight goals that you were trying to accomplish and complete it again. However, if you were to continue doing the eight things at the same time, it would take you way longer to, to complete all of them. In, in as if you know in in as opposite as if you was focusing just on one goal at a time and giving it your full mental energy and being efficient in its completion so imagine that in a month as we said you have eight units not 100 but eight now eight units and and so you give eight units of energy each month to spread and you need 100 units given to each goal to complete. So the, that's the difference, that if you focus on too many things at the same time, not only it will take you longer to accomplish each goal, but on top of that, you're going to be um, stressed at, at times. You are going to, that stress will increase your cortisol levels. Now your cortisol levels in your, in your, in your body it will basically make you more emotional. And being more emotional in general pushes you more to wanting to give up because your nerves is now overwhelmed and just wants to get away of this thing that is causing that feeling. So, so that's why it's better for an individual to focus just on one thing. And that's the secret technique how, and how focusing on one thing at a time leads to rapid progress. Rapid progress, not only if more efficiently, with less stress, and you just feel good of the speed of the progress and the, and the efficiency of it. Now, what I, want to, what I want to show you guys here is I will, I will show you in real life, like with an actual example, how me focusing on, on taking... So I will do two things, right? I will, I will show you a a timer and will time how long it takes me to take each of these circles. So the red circles, I need to put them on the red circles box and the blue circles, I need to put them in the blue circles box. As for the green circles, I just need to get them out of that circle. Now, the first time that I do this, I will just, just try and do all at the same time and we'll see how long it takes me. And the second time I do it, I do it, I will just focus on one color at a time. I'll first do the reds, I'll first do the blues, and I'll first, and then I'll do the, the greens. Now I'm so three, two, one, go. Right here. You know, my, my brain naturally goes to just focus on, on one. And you see what ha what's happening now is that my brain is thinking, okay, so this is green, this is this is red, this is this is green, this is red, and what you see now, subhanAllah, Allah, that was natural. I'm I'm trying to focus on on too many things at the same time. So my brain is obviously working less efficiently.
And you can try this at home too. You will see trying to do two things. You can do it with a box and put papers in it. And you will see how long it takes you. If you focus on just whatever color at any at the time. All right, pause. So one minute and 30 seconds focusing on any color. Now I'm just trying to get everything out of it and thinking, okay, where does this go? Where does this go? This goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Now what I will do is in the same order how these circles were, I will go ahead and focus just one thing at a time meaning one color at a time and we'll see with the same you know with the same speed how long it takes me to get them all out of each box three 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 two one go So now I'm just focusing on the red ones. So my brain is thinking red, red, red. What is the next red? What is the next red? Now blue. Now look at this. I'm already, I'm already almost half the way. Not only I could now copy and paste all the green ones and just put them up, but I will actually, I will actually go and do it and do one at a time. But you guys get the point, right? Look how fast I'm, I'm finishing the task. Because the brain just have to focus on one thing. That's it. Right? So, one, one nineteen. You might say, well, that was just 10 seconds, 10 seconds apart. The point is that I wanted to prove to you that it's faster. And this is at a smaller scale. Now, imagine a big goal that requires you know, your, the engagement of your brain in so many different ways and your brain has to focus on too many things and, and it's a longer, uh, it's, it's a goal spread at a longer, you know, in a longer period of time. That obviously what was 10 seconds here, now I'm or whatever it was, 14, 13 seconds, in a goal like learning Arabic, it will equal to more months you know go like uh, you know getting your driving license or whatever it might be or um, you know your fitness goals etc if you focus in on too many things those things take you to wake up take you to uh, go to a place maybe to talk to someone to read on someone the quran to spend hours that in comparison to these those 10 seconds in that context it would equal to a bigger period of of time so for that reason and this is the reason why students they drop out of the arabic lang of the arabic language learning journey because they get overwhelmed by how many things they are doing and then they start getting stressed out and they just find you know your brain is going to push you to find an excuse on why you should stop and maybe just restart later and you can you keep doing this start star pause cycle all over 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 and over and what happens is that you go years after years after years after years and and you never have learned the Arabic language when in reality it would only take you one year and a half two years of focus and what I would like to do is if you're watching this and you have fall into this um you know phenomenon please let me know in the comments be honest be open about it be vulnerable with us that you perhaps might be the motivation to another student 
that sees that and says, subhanAllah, I have that same, that same problem, inshallah, and that might be a source of motivation. And perhaps, you know, you might get the reward of pushing someone to learn the Arabic language, to continue to learn the Arabic language, um, or to just finish and, and complete the journey. Uh, as well, what I would like to, to remind you is that if you check the first link on the description, it's going to be a video that will bring you to a Mastering Arabic uh, guide, full guide that I recorded a couple of months ago. If you are interested on a method that works to learn the Arabic language, go ahead and, and watch it after this video. If you are interested in learning the Arabic language, completing the Arabic language, or if you are learning the Arabic language and you want to make sure that you are on the right path, on the right method, inshallah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. and I will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.